Hello there, my name is Alice Jensen Stanley. I'm a long-term Richmond resident. You're up here in my parents' beautiful garden, which inspired my love of gardening. I'm currently a member of the Richmond Garden Club and the Richmond Photo Club, which I feel is a beautiful marriage between the two. We are now in a hidden oasis in Richmond called Pollock Park. And I would love to show you some of my favorite tips to help augment your photography. And let's go, grab your cameras and let's go. Well, now I'd like to introduce you to some of the gear that I always have at my disposal when I'm out shooting flowers. First off is to get a DSLR camera, a digital camera. And the beauty of these are that you have interchangeable lenses. So you can put on a telephoto lens and you can hold it up and shoot at a distance. You may not be able to climb into that flower bed or, or what. This will allow you to tighten your shot, crop it, and it's a great lens to use. The other that I use constantly is a macro lens. A macro lens allows you to get up really, really close to your subject. This one will not hit, you know, you still have a distance to go. And you can explore the beautiful structure of a flower or leaf or what. Um, it, it's a very artistic lens in that sense because you can change the depth of field. Make sure your batteries cha are charged and bring a spare one. You never know, <laughs> you could be shooting all day. Um, also, make sure that you're constantly cleaning your lenses because you're shooting outside. You are subject to wind, uh, so pollen could blow on your lens or raindrops or debris, etc. Great way to clean it, get some lens paper or even have one of these little cloths handy dust off your lens. You don't want to put your finger on it and have oils on your lens, okay? So you can have a little airbrush like this. Go to the front of your lens, clear off any debris. This also works when on flowers or leaves, so you can just dust it off and get rid of any twigs or uh, paraphernalia on your leaves. The next thing I would invest in is a good sturdy tripod. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, a ball and head that can tilt so you can explore different angles on your photography is extremely helpful. You can use all sorts of things to stabilize your camera. This is a gorilla pod, um, very lightweight. You can wrap it around a tree branch or to your arm, whatever, and stabilize your camera. Another thing, um, if you don't have a tripod and you're on your on your tummy, bring a cloth or plastic, something to lie on. Then get your camera and use your elbows as a tripod and shoot away. It stabilizes the camera and diminishes the amount of blur that you might experience. This is great. This is just a mixture of 50% water and 50% glycerin, and it acts as dew drops. So you can spray it on your flowers or leaves and it just adds another wonderful element to your photography. Another thing for your shooting outside could be windy. You can get one of these scrims and hold it up and it can block the sun so that you don't get highlights on your flowers as you're shooting. It can bounce light onto your subject matter in the shade. It can even add golden light if you wish and it's handy to have too. So those are some of the things that I bring along on a, a shoot when I'm out in the garden. So I hope that helps. Well, I'd like to um, explain why photographers would choose to use aperture priority when you're filming in the garden or shooting in the garden. Um, here we have an example of a beautiful foxglove and there's two ways to approach it. You can shoot so that you have everything in the foreground and in the background in absolute focus and you do that for a lot of garden settings, landscape photography, but you can get very creative. 
on the second hand and shoot in a shallow or a wide open um, aperture so that only the foreground will be in focus and you can eliminate and blur out any distracting elements in the background, whether it's a tree, a sign, person, whatever, so that this is going to be your center of focus. So let's try it. Well, I'd like to introduce my accomplice Bev here, <laughs> my friend, and we are going to demonstrate why it is preferable to shoot images on a cloudy day. Um, morning is always best because there could be dew drops or whatever, but we're going to demonstrate why the sun could be your enemy. Um, here we have a beautiful rose, but the sun is causing harsh shadows on neighboring leaves and there are white blowouts on the leaves as well because they are glossy and you won't ever get those details in the veining or on petals in bright sunlight if it's blown out there's no way to retrieve it so what we do we introduce some shade fabricate it if you have anything that hold it up a little bit higher and put the flower in shade there we go that is ideal that is taking care of a lot of the highlights and augmenting your flower photography. It doesn't have to be a scrim like this, a piece of cardboard, a jacket, whatever you, you have on hand um, is great. Okay, so that's the best way to do it in a sunny situation. And I'll take two quick photos. One I'll take in full sun right now. And now, Bev, if you could hold up a little bit of shade for me, cover the leaves. And you'll see that it makes a tremendous difference in your photography. So I'd like to um, demonstrate how you can augment your flower photography by introducing um, simulated raindrops on whether it's foliage or uh, flowers in, the, in a garden setting. Here we have a lady's mantle, and this is a, a wonderful example of dew in the morning that's in the shade, which is preferable to shoot in. It's still there, but come along here. Here's an example of a beautiful iris. And let's put on our 50-50 glycerin and water spray on it. It's beating up and we'll go in for a nice shot. It looks fresher, okay, and more pristine. It looks like you've been out shooting in the morning. There we go. Well, thank you for joining me today and I hope you have gained some insight on the, my botanical hints on uh, flower photography here. Get out and enjoy your parks, whether it's Pollock Park here in Richmond or elsewhere. And there will be an accompanying PDF um, giving more elaborate information on hints on botanical photography. Thank you.